What about the ghosts? Ghost, ghost, ghost. Dank. Radio Free Ends Myth, episode 179. This week we will be reviewing an album that I actually forgot that I owned. How does one forget that they owned an album? I don't know, I got a whole lot of them. And I finally built all this new shelving to put all my CDs on, and I was wandering around one day. Alright, look how nice and alphabetized they are. Gonna wander over here, see what we got going on. Hey, wait a second, I don't remember on this. That was cool. Oh, fuck yeah! Hermaphrodite's second album from 1995, Machined and Multi-Quartered in the Captivity of Gears? What the fuck is that? Hell if I know, it's fucking some kind of Czech grindcore. And if you know anything about bands from Czechia, specifically like Maniac Butcher and The Obliteration of Humanity, and even Root occasionally, they got real long, confusing uh, song titles, album titles, everything. It's a wacky fucking language, you seen that shit? It's kind of like Vietnamese where it, it's like Roman characters, but they got all kinds of weird squiggly bits and slashes and whatnot, like sticking out of them. What the fuck's going on there? What were they thinking? I mean, if your shit is that far off from like Western languages, you gotta add all this stuff, you might as well just use Cyrillic script. I don't know. Kind of the defining feature of most Czech metal is that it's gonna be weird. And this is no exception. The title actually makes sense if you look at the album cover because there's like the bottom half of a torso and then like thighs and like some of the leg are like wound up and like entangled in this like machine press. And then there's two severed feet and a severed head on like a draft table. It's like, okay, I get what they're going for with the title, you know, sort of like the human body being mangled by a machine, that kind of thing. And you look at that cover, you know these guys play gore grind. you know what we gotta fucking talk about, right? Hey. Yeah, buddy, fucking carcass. <laughs> Right? Everybody loves Carcass. I know for me, they were one of my first death metal or grindcore or whatever metal bands I ever listened to, and it's probably like that for a whole lot of people. And in terms of, like, influencing a lot of different types of metal, Carcass is probably tied with, like, Black Sabbath. I mean, you got their early material that pretty much invented gore grind. It's all fast and nasty, just like a giant blur of noise. Most people probably hate it. I enjoy it. I don't know. I'm kind of fucking weird. <laughs> You can see how this pretty much influenced every grindcore band that came after, at least every gore grind band. You get the trading off vocals, the weird emphasis on groove, super down-tuned guitars, that kind of thing. You wouldn't have stuff like this, Poland's finest gore grind band, Dead Infection, without that early Carcass album, or Regurgitate, or any of the cool stuff like that. I really like Dead Infection. I should do an episode on these guys someday. But yeah, you see how these guys took that sort of noisy Carcass template Cleaned it up a little bit, down to the guitars even more, made it grosser. That's how you get a whole lot of modern gore grind stuff, and it's one of my favorite genres. But that's not all that Carcass influence. It wasn't just like, oh, you know, we got like that one debut album, and after that we fucking sold out. No, they kind of changed with every album, with each new iteration of their sound. They influenced like a whole new crop of bands. For instance, on their third album, Necroticism, Decanting the Insalubrious, they started really making very long songs with a whole lot of different weird sections, incorporating a lot of melody and overall sort of like progressive rock feel to their, I guess you could call it proto-melodic death metal. Whatever it is, I like it. This was actually my favorite Carcass album back in the day. You can see there's a lot more utilization in negative space between these chugs and it leads into some very like epic revelatory moments where this guitar lead is like slowly creeping in over like the fading chugs. Very architecturally structured type of songs, big on impact. And that was a big influence on a lot of the more progressive death metal bands of the mid 90s that were big on that same sort of like melodic expectation. It always feels like it's building up to some big revelation. This is God Gory right here. Hopefully you guys know this band. It's one of my favorites, but I never hear anybody talk about them. <laughs> Here's the big melodic revelation. Dank Pianos, my man. But yeah, without Necroticism, I bet you wouldn't have bands like God Gory. Then you get to like the latter part of Carcass's career when they got very melodic and very groovy. This song is called Rotten Roll. It's a B-side off of the Heartwork EP that came out in between Heartwork and Song Song. And I picked it because it shows elements of both those albums. I did a really long episode defending Swan Song which is one of uh, the most unfairly maligned albums in all of death metal. 
But yeah, no, this like groovy melodic shit right here. It's catchy. It's maybe a bit simpler than other stuff, but it definitely influenced a lot of things like Ill Disposed from Denmark, who I kind of want to do an episode on, but it would mostly just be me going, hey, check out this part. This part's cool. Look at these sick guitars. Whoa, man. Like it wouldn't be very informative, but yeah. This kind of like very boneheaded, but also very high energy form of very melodic death metal was heavily influenced by the groovier and more melodic carcass albums of the mid to late 90s. Look at that dank fucking solo, that's good stuff. And like the solo that comes after it, this one right here, okay, that's total carcass worship. So you wouldn't have any of that stuff without these different eras of carcass, but you might have noticed about all those bands that I said were influenced by carcass, they didn't sound like carcass clones. You know, it's not like, oh, what's that stupid fucking band that just sounds like a knockoff of death? Gruesome. Yeah, that's it. So in the case of bands like that, it's basically if uh, this guy, I mean, there's Chuck Schuldiner's band, Death, good band, actually, decided to start a band. And there's plenty of bands out there that are literal, just complete fucking carcass clones. Some of which I enjoy quite a bit, by the way. But I would like to think that all those bands I just played, they didn't sound like straight-up Carcass clones. They took aspects of Carcass's sound and ran with it. And that's what Hermaphrodite does. Now, those of you who are really, really into Carcass may have noticed that I omitted a particular stage of Carcass's development in that little overview. The reason for that is the omitted step is where I see most of the Carcass influence being drawn on by Hermaphrodite comes from. Specifically, we're talking about Symphonies of Sickness, which in many ways is Carcass's most complex album. Ah, you gonna not now hold your horses, I didn't say it was their hardest album to play. Obviously there's parts on the criticism and even Heartwork that are a lot more difficult for any guitar player to get out of their fingers. But in terms of like how the songs are structured and like the way that it's all layered and amorphous, this is kind of like the peak of their songwriting complexity. It utilizes a lot of negative space and it has, an, you know, always Carcass has that heavy focus on groove and it comes most to the forefront on this their most rhythmically complex album. It's also probably their most humorous, where they have like these little interjections of weird noises and whatnot. And that sort of emphasis on like very weirdly structured songs coupled with a lot of groove and a bizarre sense of humor is where you get Hermaphrodite. Now buckle yourselves in because Hermaphrodite is one of the strangest bands I have ever heard. There's an almost constant use of syncopation and very strange stop-start grooves. Each riff is sort of like a little mini unit of composition that they can then swap out parts on to uh, connect them into like other sections of the song. You can see right here they're definitely building up into sort of like a weird collapse as the complexity moves up and then down into this weird little collapsing section. Back into like a very elemental groove. It's all been like the same basic sort of riff and they're just doing all these different things with it rhythmically. That's what I mean when I say these guys are complex, like how Symphonies of Sickness is complex. It wouldn't be that hard to play, but like rhythmically in terms of how all the parts link together, it's a pretty complicated album. Total fucking like breakdown riff right here. Really cool instrumental separation, like that totally audible bass. The drums have a very nice sort of like hiss and pop to them. This is like a weird little thrash riff kind of inserted into the melee. There's another ingredient they added to that sort of groovy carculus formula, and that is a whole lot of psychedelia. With weird like flangers on the guitars, bizarre bluesy soloing, very nihilistically humorous type stuff. One of the other major concepts I keep bringing up is the idea of like negative space with that particular Carcass Symphonies of Sickness album. Well, these guys take that concept and elevate it to like high art along with the uh, humorous vocal interjections and overall absurdity. Like that bizarre sense of humor and like the weird vocal outbursts and the stop start stuff. That was definitely an element of Carcass, but these guys kind of built their whole sound around it and did a really good job with it. It's very mechanical sounding in that they'll repeat these short phrases that started out as stop-start motifs and they turn into this like mechanical cycle. Very weird way of composing a song, but it works wonders for them. Here's a cool little counterpoint to it. Awesome fucking drumming on this album. But yeah, this is like a weird little response to that intro shrug thing right there. 
Kind of technical. Back into a single pedal, old school grindcore blast beat with that main riff coming back. Also, these hanging chords kind of remind me of uh, Coroner a little bit, but Coroner weren't ever this weird either. These guys might be the weirdest band that I listen to. I don't know, they're fucking strange. It's got a lot of these weird interlude parts that remind me a lot of what Pestilence was doing around the same time with Spheres. But whereas Spheres was very like dry and academic, this album is like goofy, nihilistically laughing at the absurdity of the human condition and mortality. And they're having a whole lot of fun while they're doing it. This bluesy bit here makes me think they're going to turn into a sludge band, but I don't know if I could see that happening. Here's another nice groove riff. Fucking amazing drumming. A lot of the Czech bands have really good drumming, like Cult of Fire and whatnot. This is like a bolt thrower riff right here. Very chuggy, grindy, running people over the tank type stuff. Hey, remember when I said this sounded like a sludge band? Yeah, they turn into a sludge band sometimes. Going almost full crowbar, 75% crowbar here. But they're still fucking weird. I love that bass sound. It reminds me so much of the bass on Grave's third album, Soulless, which is my favorite Grave album. Oh, hush you. You know Soulless kicks ass. And so does this album. As I believe I've adequately demonstrated. More weird kind of like fucking dancing proggy parts. Effortless switching between these like two different very strange idiosyncratic styles. So now by this point you're like, hell yeah brother, this album kicks ass. And you're trying to look up Hermaphrodite on uh, Metal Archives and you're not finding anything. That's because Metal Archives spells Hermaphrodite or Hermaphrodite, there's no E at the end, with an F. However, this album is technically a split album between Hermaphrodite PH, which would be their grindcore shit, and Hermaphrodite with an F, which is their breakbeat shit. So what the hell is breakbeat? Well, it's a whole lot of sample drum fills, or, you know, breaks for the beat, kind of like worked together, macerated and chopped up into these new configurations, which very much fits with like sort of the uh, theme of the album cover there. What's this shit doing on a metal album? That shit I just played you, that was like their most pure electronic stuff, but a lot of the electronic half of this album sounds a little bit more like God Flesh's Us and Then album, where it's a fusion between breakbeat and uh, grindcore concepts. Such as overlaid samples of people talking about medical procedures, leading into some very... odd sort of guitar drone, with this sort of like hip-hop beat in the background. See, this sounds a little bit more metal. This sounds a little bit more like the first half of the album there. And it gets more metal the further into it you go. There's a weird little punk metal kind of riff that wouldn't be out of place on like a newer Dark Throne album that it leads into. Weird breakbeat shit overlaid with that same sort of metal guitar riff. See, now this album cover is making more sense. It's human flesh being eaten up by machinery. These two styles kind of being combined in weird spots in the same album. These weird kind of like spaced out chiming lead guitars make me think a lot of like later God Flesh too, which is never a bad thing. So yeah, it's kind of danceable, it's kind of weird. It fits their band name Hermaphrodite to a T because, you know, Hermaphrodites, someone's got male and female parts in the same organism. These guys have electronic and grindcore parts in the same musical organism. It all makes sense. It's all patterns within patterns, man. Autism. What? Is that really? I mean, shit, if I wasn't holding this album in my hands right now, I honestly wouldn't even believe that it existed. I never see anybody talk about it, even though it's great. I don't remember how I found out about it. I think I was just looking around through, like, old Czech stuff and saw the album cover and thought it was cool and not a purchase I regret, even if I forgot the fact that I made it. But that's about all for this episode. Check out this Hermaphrodite album if you get a chance, and I'll see you around. 네, 여러분, 안녕하세요. 오늘은... Get it? Check? Because they're check? Uh... If you like the video, subscribe for more, yes. Не смотрю спецом, боящий туму, пропаганда яда, то шоу, шуры, муры, заезженные шкуры, кремлевские шарады, на русское табу, пусть подавятся своим жихадом на параде штаты. Когда такое было, что по Красной площади они прошли со своим кином.